Hi, good morning, everyone. This is Jody here with Source Mortgage Center, and I'm joined by Susan Kramer, who's a licensed realtor with Coldwell Banker on track Realty out of Central Alberta. Thank you so much, Susan, for taking the time to be here with me today. Good morning, Jody. Thank you for having me. For sure. Um, so, Susan, we've already talked about um, when you're looking to buy a home, how do you select the right realtor? Mm -hmm. And I want to talk today about the reverse. So when you're selling a home, which I think is almost more important because you're the one actually paying for and hiring that individual, what are some of the things that people should look for when they're selecting that realtor? That's a really good question. So the, the first thing is don't just settle for someone who has a sign up in your neighborhood or uh, the one who does the most advertising that you see on TV or around town. Uh, do interview and make sure that you find someone that you are compatible with because chances are this is going to be a long-term relationship, not a short term. Even in today's seller's market, you're going to be dealing with that person for probably a minimum of six weeks because mm -hmm. that's kind of how long it takes from the point where you make the decision you first meet the individual, you get the home ready to go on the market, it gets listed, people look at it for a while, um, an offer is made, and then you're waiting for possession date. So I see kind of the minimum that could be would be around a six week period. So make sure it's someone you like, because you're going to be talking to them a lot during that period. Um, and then the other thing to remember is that you're paying. So be choosy. Um, don't just give your money to anybody. Give it to somebody that you know is going to do the best job possible for you. Mm -hmm. And the way to do that is to interview and ask them questions about what they're going to do for you. Uh, for example, um, I do weekly marketing updates. So if I have a listing, I'll go out and look to all the places where I've advertised it. And I get counts of the number of people that have actually been in to view. I give shower feedback within 24 hours of a showing. Um, I hold open houses. Like There's lots of different things that I do. Uh, to help move a sale. Uh, not everybody wants all of those things, but again, as the seller, you can pick and choose what services you want added, but be aware that it could slow down your selling process a little bit. Right. Um, the next thing is to look for somebody who actually specializes in your area and understands your area, because anybody coming to the home cold is going to need to understand about the area so they know what a great neighborhood they're moving into. And right. the only way to do that is if you're a little familiar with the area. The next thing is if you were selling, say, for an example, an acreage or a condominium, you'd want to make sure that that agent that you're hiring actually understands those environments and can sell in them. Because mm -hmm. condos, for example, have so many rules and regulations. It's you really need to understand condos before you sell one to someone. Right. Um, and then beware, the last sort of cautionary item is beware of teams. Sometimes on a team, the primary leader in the team does all the advertising. And when you go to hire the team, you think you're getting that individual. And sometimes what you're actually getting is one of the other agents who works on that team. Now, right. that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just something that you need to ask so that you're not disappointed if you think you're getting the big cheese and you get the, the medium cheese. <laughs> um so again, just last thing, just remember you're paying, so be picky. It has to, again, be somebody you like, that you think you can work with long-term, and that you know is going to do the best job possible for you. Perfect. Thanks, Susan. I think that's really, really helpful. And and so I guess when you are picking, um, would you recommend that people interview quite a few agents? Or what is, what's the number, I guess, that yeah, I guess the magic find someone that feels the right fit, that, like you said, understands the property yeah. you're selling in the neighborhood yeah. and all of that? Well, I think sometimes when you've got your questions and you get the right answers to the questions, it's okay to settle on yeah. the first agent. But yeah. but just just be aware, like you might want to interview two or three. I don't know that I'd go to like five, six, More, seven. Yeah, That's waste just gonna time. Waste your time in there is right. But but to interview two or three, I think is very reasonable. Very okay. reasonable. Okay. Well, thank you so much for that. And I've got Susan's contact information at the bottom there. So if anyone does have any questions about selling their home and wants to reach out to Susan, I know she'd be happy to help you out. I would. I'd be delighted. Thank you. Awesome. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Susan. Have a great day. Okay. You too. Bye-bye.